first up on Beyond Dispatch. Well, over the past 12 days, Israeli troops have encircled Gaza City, effectively cutting the coastal enclave into two as they look to hunt down and eliminate Hamas fighters. The IDF says it has destroyed over 100 entrances of Gaza tunnels used by the Hamas. The defense minister, Yoav Gallant, said Israeli troops were uh, tightening the stranglehold around the Gaza City. Listen in. Gaza is the biggest terror base ever built by mankind. This whole city is one big terror base. Underground kilometers of tunnels that connect to hospitals and schools connect to each other. They include communication rooms, ammunition storages, places to sleep and all of it. In order to act as a basis of terror from which they can hurt the citizens of Israel and soldiers of the IDF. The Israeli army released a video, meanwhile, of what it said was the location and destruction of tunnels in Gaza used by Hamas members. Remember, Gaza's narrow web of streets is doubled underground by a dense tunnel network known to Israeli troops as the Gaza Metro. Some tunnels are as deep as 130 feet below ground, allowing militants to change position away from the danger of strikes. Rocket batteries hidden just a few meters beneath the surface can be uncovered with a trap door just for the time it takes to fire a salvo. Israeli forces gave a small group of foreign reporters a rare view of their advance, driving them along sandy routes churned by tank trucks, uh, tank tracks uh, to f firing uh, to the fringes of Gaza City, and blackened windows, shattered bedrooms, pockmarked walls. Israeli strikes, in some cases, have demolished entire city blocks. And Hamas's military arm. The Al Qasim brigades also showed of what they said was close fighting with the Israeli forces on the streets of Gaza. Hamas has accused the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees of colluding with Israel in the forced displacement of residents of Gaza. Thousands of Palestinians are fleeing south from Gaza City on foot, in some cases carrying nothing but clothes on their back. The Israeli army has told Palestinians in the north where it is battling Hamas militants to move south. Already, more than 1.5 million people in Gaza have fled their homes in search for safety and the exodus has grown as Israel's air and ground campaign intensifies. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs stated about 15,000 people fled on Tuesday compared with 5,000 on Monday and 2,000 on Sunday. The U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, has called on Israel not to reoccupy Gaza once its war with Hamas ends. Earlier this week, Netanyahu said Israel would take overall security responsibility for the territory following the war. The United States believes key elements should include no forcible displacement of Palestinians uh, from Gaza. Not now, not after the war. No use of Gaza as a platform for terrorism or other violent attacks. No reoccupation of Gaza after the conflict ends. No attempt to blockade or besiege Gaza. No reduction in the territory of Gaza. And according to figures released on Wednesday, 31 Israeli soldiers have been killed during the Gaza ground offensive and more than 260 injured. Gaza officials say over 10,000 people have been killed by Israeli forces since October 7th. 40% of them are children. The Israeli government has stated it was still very premature to discuss post-war scenarios, but that Gaza would be demilitarized and must never again become a terror nest. And well, for the very latest updates, our correspondent Jody Cohen sent us this report from Israel. 
U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has suggested that post-war Gaza should be governed by the Palestinians. Member of Israel's war cabinet Ron Dermer has agreed, saying that the Palestinians should govern Gaza but not Hamas, and that the Palestinians should have all the powers to govern themselves, with none of the powers to threaten Israel. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, who governs the West Bank, has said he would only take responsibility for Gaza as part of a wider political solution. Until the PA is ready to govern Gaza, the US reportedly proposed a role for Egypt, which ruled Gaza before Israel. However, President Sisi has reportedly rejected this proposal. There's also been talk of a role for international organizations or an international peacekeeping force. In the meantime, the US and UK have suggested that Israel will need to have an initial security responsibility in Gaza. And in an interview with US media, Prime Minister Netanyahu agreed with that position. This is Jody Cohen for We On World As One. And well, for more on the offensive in Gaza City, we earlier spoke to Anthony Lowestin, independent journalist and author of the Palestine Authority. Well, certainly not now. I mean, one of the things that Blinken seems to be suggesting is that the Palestine Authority, which is a deeply corrupt body that rules nominally in the West Bank for years, which is hated by many, if not most, Palestinians, should somehow potentially also control Gaza. It's kind of delusional because huge amounts of Palestinians in Gaza will not accept the kind of despotic rule that they've had, their brothers and sisters have had in the West Bank for years. And one of the problems, of course, is that for many, many years, the Palestinian Authority essentially has been what Israel has wanted to use. They've kind of outsourced the occupation to Palestinian movements such as the Palestinian Authority. So in other words, Israel has complete control of the West Bank, can go in and out, takes people, kills people, arrests huge amounts of people, including children, and somehow that's the model for Gaza. I mean, it's just frankly offensive and delusional because many people in Gaza who are now being forcibly removed from the north of Gaza to the south will have nowhere to go in a corrupt Palestinian Authority-run administration. So it's very concerning that the US is putting this forward as an idea.